التغييرات أديك من أنت شيء تزوره هذونا When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. What was it about this room that caught so deeply and so pleasantly to Stanley? Its grace, its subtle charm? No. Stanley knew it was something deeper, something darker. Igen. Hol? Jó, most ez a pár nézetméter, ez nyilván sötét, de ez azért van, mert nem yes. működnek a izé, really, a, a really lámpák. Really de nem hagyom, hogy nem tudom. So, at but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following yeah, directions, yeah. it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in trust that. in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is Wait, that the story has been about nothing but you no, all this time. Mm -hmm. There's someone you've been That's neglecting, what? Stanley. Someone you forgot. Please, stop trying to make every decision. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful.
Kapját többen az összes kontinuum számosságú foszfát, mert rájöttem, hogy az állam se látták le, szóval szóval epik. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. There was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Yo, yo, yo. Yo. Yo, bitches. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Hmm. But Stanley just oh, couldn't do it. Auto. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Mm -hmm. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single nope, moment. Nope, nope. No nope. Person nope. Person nope. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet? When he looked down, why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look a but they simply repeating. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying. And what? began to gently float Me? off the ground. Over. Then he imagined Me. himself soaring through space on no. a magical star no. field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley no. marveled that he had still not no. broken up. No. How no. was he no. no. so no. lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stan's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head? Dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking. Talk show talk. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice that spoke to all of his dreams, this was not a dream. Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he is asleep, he doesn't take responsibility. Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. 
Now hearing the boy speak these words was quite a shock. He knew for certain beyond a doubt that this boy had lied to dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. Nope. So he closed his eyes gently. Yep. And he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. What? This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She rose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange He was obviously crazy. This Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there staring down at the body and then she turned and ran. Szörnyű. De most nem, most, most találsz egy sérült, vagy mint olyan valót nem az utcán, mit csinálsz? Ránézek. Hello. Nem szól vissza. Na, akkor meg tovább, úgyis egy 5 perc szóval már a vizodámban lenne helyem. A helyet inkább, húzisten, bassza meg, ez egy hulla. Föl kéne hívnom a mentőket legalább, hogy takarítsák el, vagy valami, mert mindjárt húzosszagot fog árasztani. Stanley 
decided to go to the meeting room to check uh, on his co-workers. Uh, he never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. 